Hello students, welcome. Previously, lesson 7, from 3 to 3, we were dealing with drawing the structures of alkene compounds and also isomerism in alkenes. So today, lesson 8, we want to proceed to the laboratory preparation of alkenes. And we are saying, in a school laboratory, alkenes may be prepared from dehydration of alkanols using from an A, concentrated sulfur six acid as the dehydrating agent and we are having the general chemical equation there so we take alkanol then we dehydrate using a dehydrating agent like concentrated sulfur six acid we are going to heat the mixture and we are going to get alkene being prepared but as also water for example so if we are preparing maybe boropine we have to take borobanol as our alkanol we take borobanol then we are going to dehydrate using concentrated sulfur six acid as our dehydrating agent and we are going to heat the mixture of propanol and also sulfur six acid and we are going to get propene gas which we are preparing balance water as our product so this is in word equation let's just try to see it in chemical equation and here we are told we are having the general formula for alkanol which is cn h2n plus one or h which is liquid so this is the general formula for alkanol then sulfuric acid we are going to heat the mixture we are going to have the general formula for alkene which is cn h2n which is a gas and we are going to get water for example if we are dealing with the liberation of propene we have to take first of all uh, the formula for borobanol so brop stands for three carbon atoms so we are going to have c3 using the formula h two times three will be six plus one that's seven oh then this is a liquid in physical state we are going to dehydrate using dehydrating agent like concentrated sulfurous six acid we are going to heat the mixture of ethan uh, propanol and also sulfurous six acid what we are going to get there will be propene with the general formula of c3 then h2 times three is six balance water so that's a gas balance water as our product remember this equation is self-balanced we proceed part b using aluminium oxide as the dehydrating agent and the general formula remains the same the only change is that where we were using concentrated sulfur six acid as our dehydrating agent we are going to use aluminium oxide in this case and we are going to go next conditions for dehydration process one we are supposed to have temperature of between 160 degrees celsius to 180 degrees celsius number two we are supposed to have as reagent as concentrated sulfurous acid as a dehydrating agent or aluminium oxide as a dehydrating agent so next we are going to go to see the collection of uh, alkene gases or uh, ethene or propene the gas that we are preparing so we are saying ethene or the alkene gas is collected using of a water method since it is slightly soluble in water so if in case we are dealing with propene gas propene gas is collected over of a water method since propene is slightly soluble in water in case we are dealing with ethene ethene gas is collected over water method since ethene is slightly soluble in water if we are dealing with butene gas butene gas is collected using of a water method since butene is slightly soluble in water what we are saying in general is that the alkene gas is collected using of a water method since it's slightly soluble in water next we are going to see laboratory preparation of ethene gas so I think ethene gas is prepared by dehydration of ethanol using concentrated sulfur six acid as the dehydrating agent. And we are going to use this diagram here. So here we are having we are having sand bath with the broken parcelin there. And we are told the role of the broken parcelin and sand or sand is it's used to prevent pumping which may result in cracking of the flux. That's the first one. Number two, the role of that sun is to ensure uniform and smooth boiling of the mixture. Which mixture? Concentrated sulfur six acid and also ethanol. So we proceed. We are told what is dehydration. What is dehydration? Dehydration is the process of removing water or elements of water from a compound or from a substance. Dehydrating agent 
is a substance which is capable of removing chemically combined water or element of elements of water from a compound or from a substance so that's called dehydrating agent so let's see examples of dehydrating agents we are told include concentrated sulfur six acid and also we have aluminum oxide those are the two examples of dehydrating agents we are told when a mixture of ethanol and concentrated sulfur six acid is heated at temperatures between 106 degrees celsius and 180 degrees celsius water is removed from ethanol and ethane gas is formed and the thin gas formed is collected by our water method because we can see it from here. We can see it from the diagram when the mixture of uh, concentrated sulfurous acid and also ethanol is heated, we are going to get a thin gas which is collected by the overwater method as you see. Okay, next we, we are saying, write the general equation. The general equation is that if I'm having ethanol, I dehydrate using sulfurosic acid as our dehydrating agent and we are going to heat the mixture of ethanol and sulfurosic acid, we are going to get ethane gas and also water and this is the chemical equation and remember we said this equation is self-balanced. Okay, next we are saying the gas produced, that's ethane gas, contains traces of carbon dioxide and sulfur 6 oxide sulfur peroxide i mean sorry and sulfur peroxide as impurities as impurities which are formed by thermal decomposition of ethanol and concentrated sulfur acid respectively it is therefore basal through concentrated sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide solution in order to remove the impurities which impurities carbon peroxide and also sulfur peroxide this is carbon peroxide and this is sulfur peroxide. Okay, let's see that diagram. We are going to have our sodium hydroxide here. So when a thin gas is formed, it will have traces of carbon peroxide and also sulfur peroxide, which comes alongside with ethene. But carbon peroxide and also sulfur peroxide being acidic gases they will be reacting with the basic sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide in the in the conical flask so they will be removed here so therefore pure ethene gas will be collected by the overwater method so next we are saying note note at a temperature of about 140 degrees celsius a different compound called ether is mentally formed Ethene can also be prepared by dehydration of ethanol using aluminum oxide and we are using this, this diagram here. So we are having cotton wool soaked with ethanol and we are having aluminum oxide here. We are going to heat the aluminum oxide. So ethene gas will be collected by our water method since it is, it is slightly soluble in water. So the chemical equation will be the same. The only change is that where we heat sulfur 6 acid as our dehydrating agent, we are going to have aluminum oxide there. The rest will be just the same. The equation will be just self-balanced. We are saying not the aluminum oxide acts both as a catalyst as well as the dehydrating agent or a dehydrating agent. So next, that's the we are done with the laboratory preparation of uh, ethene. We are going to go and see the physical properties of ethene gas. So ethene is a colorless and non-boisonous gas or non-toxic gas. It is an odorless gas. It is less denser than air. It is slightly soluble in water, but soluble in organic solvents such as methyl benzene and also tetrachloromethene. So we proceed to the physical properties of alkenes. The physical properties of alkenes are just the same as to the physical properties of alkenes. So check the the table here we're having the melting point and the boiling point and also the density what we can see is that the melting point and the boiling point is going to increase along the series while the density also increases along the series just like alkanes so we say like alkanes alkenes are colorless gases liquids and solids that are non-boisonous or non-toxic we are saying they are insoluble in water but soluble in organic solvents such as methyl benzene and also tetrachloromethane. So next we are saying the melting and the boiling points of alkenes 
increases along the series and this is due to the increase in the carbon atoms which increases the strength of the intermolecular forces for attraction. So next we are seeing the density of alkenes increases along the series. This is due to the increase in the molecular mass. And lastly, the solubility of alkenes decreases along the series. Reason, this is due to the increase in the molecular mass. So learners, that's the end of our video today. Thank you.